They say a man needs a good woman to grow a family tree. But not Joshua Cave, he was a man who needed three. He was homesteading 180 acres in the territory of Wyoming. And that's a heap of mule plowing and stump grubbing. His city dwelling daughters had full lives of their own. So he got himself three new ones to share his land and home. The daughters of Joshua Cave. The daughters of Joshua Cave. Well, fun fuddle linky, I fuddle linky, oh, there ain't no prettier sight than three little gals who've gone wrong, gone right. Now one had sticky fingers, lifting wallets was her trade, and one was a painted lady. Joshua sprang from a gilded cage. The third, she was a jailbird. He got parole from prison. Three feisty women. And now they're hissing, the daughters of Joshua K. The daughters of Joshua K. Well, fud fud linky, I fud linky, oh, there ain't no prettier sight than three little gals who've gone wrong, gone right. Well, they traded their button-up shoes for slogging boots and their fancy wines for sorghum molasses, fat back, and bulldog gravy. They crossed the mighty prairie to help him stake his claim. And Josh gave him a brand new home and a new adopted name. Two faded lilacs, one soiled dove, a building them a new life with a man and the land they love. Them three city thistles turned into right nice prairie sunflowers. Reckon it takes a wildcat woman to tame a wilderness. The daughters of Joshua Cave. The daughters of Joshua Cave. Well, fud fud linky, I fud linky, oh, there ain't no prettier sight than three little gals who've gone wrong, gone right. Now that's a cup of coffee. <laughs> Good morning. How come I never get it first? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, you are a wonderful egg. Just plain old fried. Well, with a tender touch, only a loving daughter can give. You saying those eggs I fixed all the time and was batching wasn't no good? Are you trying to tell me they compared with these? No. Speaking of batching it, uh, now that this is an honest-to-goodness home, what about those bearskin rugs you've been promising for our bedroom floor? Well, you know, first, honey, we've got to catch us a bear. You said when the trees in the west pasture were cut, you'd go hunting and get them for us. And they're cut. We got the blisters to prove it. Wouldn't hurt none. You know, a few days out there in the mountains. Hey, huh? what better time than now? Yeah. You forget about Dutton? Well, don't worry about him. Well, he'll be all right. Oh, we'll feed him like we always do. Federal Marshal's picking him up sometime today, transferring him to the territorial prison. I forgot. Yeah. Plus, which you forgot that I'm having a talk with Mayor Bagley. This temporary sheriff has gone on too long. We'll get out them bearskins next week, honey. If we can. See you at noon for dinner. Wouldn't hurt none if we used to smell some huckleberry pie when we get back either, huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Well, we tried. Chances are they won't see me when I go in town. Well, if it was me, I wouldn't go. Yes, you would. Matt probably wasn't interested in you, just this land. <laughs> Change from time is past. Don't May. Well, the way his invitation was made, I think it's best I accept. Do you want us to come with you? Well, sure, we'll go. No, I don't think so. I'll handle him. Where to warn it, Marshal? You can't.
keep your death side of this, and he'll have you jawed to death six miles out of town. No territorial prison is going to hold me. I'll be back for you, too. See what I mean? Why, you flat fungalute, you've been in this tin box nearly a week. You broke out of nothing but run him out ever since Josh arrested you. And if he ain't the mangiest excuse for a lawman this side of the picket Let's wire... Let's go, Dutton. The mistake that made you sheriff, I'm going to put right. Put that in your book. You ever hear the likes of that? Yeah, well, you're right about one thing. Wearing this badge is a mistake. If it is, just temporary. You sound like a mayor. It's been temporary for six months. You heard, didn't you, that Sheriff Wheeler was seen down Tombstone a while back? Yeah, I heard. If he's not seen up here in Grand Forks mighty soon, Grand Forks is going to have to elect a new permanent sheriff. <laughs> you know who that'll be. <laughs> I'm no lawman. Huh? A long time ago. I'm a rancher. I have been a rancher for 26 years. I got a homestead that needs proving up on before I lose it. If Grand Fork spreads a couple more miles to the east, that homestead's going to be in the town limits. No, sir. Instead of being a struggling rancher, you're going to be a very wealthy landlord. No, sir. If you'd have took Matt Cobley's offer to buy you out, you could be a pretty rich temporary sheriff right now. I'll take nothing from that oily mouth walloper. Before Martha died, we agreed that land was going to be a working ranch, and that's what it's going to be, not part of a town. Something I can leave the girls. before we own it. <laughs> but you, look what you did! What I did, the cow did it! Yeah, because you don't have the brains God gave a gopher! Will you stop yelling at me? Stop yelling at you? You're lucky I don't ram this broom handle up your nose! Oh, look what you did to my garden! <laughs> What's going on here? Well, I almost got trampled, and she's all worried about her stupid garden! I could have been killed! You still could be, Miss High and Mighty Light Fingers! Will you two hush? Well, did you see what she did to my garden? Did you hear what she just called me? Do you know how long it took you know me to get all kinds of dirt about all out of that garden? I did not come home to referee another one of your squabbles. I came home to eat my dinner. It isn't ready. Well, it's 12 o'clock noon. Well, May didn't milk the cow. Well, I needed milk for the biscuits. There wasn't any, so... Yeah, so Featherhead started to milk the cow while it was nursing its calf. Well, how was I supposed to know? Well, how was I supposed to know? Ain't no way a body would ever know you two wasn't really blood sisters. <laughs> I want my dinner now. Forget the biscuits. Cream chicken on biscuits without biscuits? Cream chicken on biscuits without the biscuits. Where is May? May? Your sister. She's not here. All right, let's have it. Now. She went into Grand Forks. What for? Well? To see Matt Cobley. Matt Cobley? But what will Josh think? I hate to say that, but young ladies of my day had better sense. Yes, Mrs. Of course, Danish girls were raised with a greater sense of propriety. You told me that before, Miss Essie. Simple put, you should not be seen with him in public after him Romeoing you the way he did, and then to find out the real reason. Ah. Hello, May. May. We'll wait a few minutes to order, Mrs. Cargo. Thanks for coming. How could I refuse? Oh, you look as lovely as ever. Don't push it, Matt. It's taking everything I've got to keep from scratching your eyes out. I always did like a lady with restrained fire. Did you really? Well, just think. If Josh had found his real daughters, 
I'd have never met you. How did you find out? By hiring the best private detectives in St. Louis that money could buy. Owning Josh's land will be more than worth the cost. I'm sure it could be. So is the expense of the lawyer I've retained. You've been busy. Mm hmm the lawyer too. The homestead claims Josh filed under your and your sister's names. They're invalid. Adopted daughters, with or without questionable reputations, are ineligible. You've really been busy. I've been trying to sort you three out. Tell me, now were you the one Josh got out of Glenville prison, or the pickpocket? Which do you think? <laughs> you... You were the soiled dove. May I get you some more? No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. Exposing your identities would cost Josh his land. That would keep him from paying off his debts here in Grand Forks. Proud man that he is, he'd probably kill himself trying. Yes, he probably would. His place would be opened again for homesteading, and I'd be forced to use other means of acquiring it. Now, on the other hand, we could keep our secret. I could pay him enough to clear up what he owes, plus a little to start over somewhere else, and you three could get back to St. Louis. I mean, this... this really isn't a life for you, is it? You go along with me or not, May, he's going to lose that land. And it'll be up to you to decide whether or not he'll have anything to show for the years he's put into it. Hello, Josh. You'll forgive me if I don't stand. I thought the Cave family had finished with you. No, I'm a very determined man. And persuasive. How persuasive? Enough to convince me we should reconsider his offer. I'll be in touch with you later. Now, wait a minute here. Josh, you... this isn't the time or place. Maybe you'd better start thinking about moving to California, out of these cold Wyoming winters. Did you see that? What? That homestead will be taken over my dead body, and I'll take a ring-tailed vow there'll be another dead body before mine. Figured. May come storm in a few minutes ago. I couldn't get a word out of her. She wouldn't even look at me. Where is she? Inside the house there with Ada and Charity. I could see they needed space to talk, so I just left them be. It's bad, huh? Could be. Depends on how much is rubbed off on them these past few months. Well, how much can all this really mean to them anyway? No matter how you look at it, Josh, they're just three city girls from St. Louis, and all the pretending in the world ain't gonna change that. My daughter. There are three girls you got in St. Louis when you couldn't find your real daughters. like we didn't expect to go back to St. Louis eventually. It's really just a matter of time. I guess when's been decided for us. Matt Cobley said either way you lose the homestead claim. Sort of makes our staying here kind of sensitive. Well, I guess I wasn't as smart as I thought I was when I filed that claim. Selling this land to him will at least give you something. Yes, and whatever it is, you'd all have a share of it. No, no it is. It's yours and Uncle Bitterroot. Well, some things you just can't fight. No, like a homestead claim the government land office says is no good. Like that. Them ready to call it quits and go back to St. Louis. Well, that's something else. Yeah, you bet it is. Now, you listen to me. Josh, there's no sense. You keep your peace, miss, until I've finished. You know, this land means a lot to me for a lot of reasons, and most of them you know about. Evidently, you don't know how much you all mean to me. Well, if you don't, it's too bad. I, I just won't spell it out for you. Thanks to Matt Cobley, the government land office might decide I have no legal claim to this place. I just might lose it. But I'm not going to lose you. You're staying right here in this valley, if possible. But wherever, with me. And me.
I'll just stay put until I get back. Where are you going? Where in blazes do you think? What the devil are you doing in my room? Well, now wait just a minute. I ask you a question. Where do you think you're going? What are you doing in my room? Huh? Where's Matt Conley? Is he going out? Josh! I've got a matter I want to discuss with him. Is he in his room or is he going out? He's in his room. Where is it? It's number six. Josh, I know you have reason to be angry with... Open up, Cobbley. It's Josh Cave. As he told me you were in there. I want to talk to you. We've got something to settle, and we're going to settle it once and for all. Joshua Cave, you've known him as long as you've lived in Grand Forks. He's lived in this valley longer than this town has been here. He's serving as your sheriff during the present absence of Ben Wheeler. Now, is your judgment so bad that you could have picked a, a murderer to protect yourselves and your families? I think not. Just as I think you will deny the charge of premeditated murder, I know that your verdict will vindicate my belief as it will vindicate your friend. Fortunately, for the sake of justice, I don't share your personal acquaintanceship with the accused. One of the advantages of being a circuit judge new to the territory. As such, I'm able to look at the evidence from an unclouded point of view. That evidence clearly points to a definite threat of death made in the presence of several townspeople present in this courtroom. It even includes the somewhat grudging testimony of Mrs. Cargo, a close friend of the accused, who told of Sheriff Cabe's anger just prior to the killing. Then there's the testimony of Clell Tonkins, who heard a cry and some scuffling coming from the murder room located just next to his. And finally, the testimony of the man who saw the actual death struggle. Gentlemen, you have a duty. Despite your personal feelings, and strictly in light of the testimony to return your verdict. And I remind you, bias has no place in a court of law. That flag stands for justice. He will be vindicated. Jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. How do you find? We find Joshua Cabe guilty of murder in the first degree. Oh. How could you? Order! Order! Prisoner will rise.
Josh, you have a cave. You've been found guilty by a jury of your peers. Murder is a foul deed. It is even more foul when committed by one sworn to uphold the law. Your crime touches all of us so dedicated. I hereby sentence you to be taken to the territorial prison. There in 30 days time to be hanged by the neck until you are dead. No! Oh. Keep that bedroom. May, honey, this was Martha's wedding ring. Would you hold that? Oh, Josh. Yeah, now, now, now. The appeal to the governor for a new trial is automatic. Sure is. That'll postpone the hanging indefinitely. Don't use that word. All right, I won't. If you promise not to worry. But you're innocent. I know, and we'll prove it somehow. But that godforsaken hellhole they call the territorial prison. That's no place for a man your age, Josh. What? Essie Cargo, what do you mean, a man of my age? Are you trying to add, Josh? It'll be near dark before we get there as it is now. sent to territorial prison last week. He swore he did, Josh. He sure won't get a better chance at it. that lawyer fellow Pickett? Yeah. He got a letter from the territorial governor. Is there going to be a new trial? Not without new evidence. Ah. But there is hope. Let me tell you what Jim Pickett said. Will you listen to someone who's been there? Once they get you behind bars, they don't want to let you go. They're not going to keep Josh behind bars for long. He's going to hang in less than three weeks. Don't say that. It's true. Now just hold up there. He ain't hanged yet. And there's something else. Go on, tell him, Missy. Jim Pickett 
is going to try to get the governor to commute the death sentence to life. We know in a week or so. Life in prison? Oh, no. Poor Josh. You call that something? Now, wait a minute. Listen to me. Can't you see that if, that if his sentence is, what do you call that? Commuted. Commuted. It'll give us time to work for his release. Well, what if the governor refuses? Yeah. He won't. He won't. Damn it, he won't. He can't. He promised us a new trial if we got some new evidence. What new evidence is there? I mean, are you going to be able to get the people who heard Josh threaten to kill Cobley to say they didn't hear it? Or, or that Clell Tompkins to say he didn't hear what he heard from, from the room at Essie's? Or the drummer to say he didn't see what he saw? There is no new evidence! There will be some! <laughs> There has to be, and there will be. There will be, darling. I swear, Josh ain't gonna hang. No, he won't hang. Because we're gonna break him out of that prison. Oh, child. Now, you back up that wagon there. Better not leave her alone. You heard what she said. Yes, I heard what she said, and she knows that's impossible. She is going to wait for Jim Pickett to do what he can. Aren't you, Charity? And we are going to put our trust in prayers to the Lord. Trust and prayers to the Lord is what Essie said. Charity, there's just no way we could do it. Will you listen to me? I have been in and out of more prisons than you two have even heard of. And I'm telling you, we can do it. And for putting trust and prayers to the Lord, I agree. But like an old boxer friend of mine used to say, in a fight, prayers help if you got a good right cross. Okay. Seven dollars, Billy. Make it ten. I'm sorry, Billy. Seven dollars. But I can buy it back. Certainly, yes. You see, I keep it for 90 days. And then I sell it for whatever I can get for it. <laughs> Come to uh, four thirty-five altogether. But now, no, don't worry. I'll keep it in the book. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> there you are. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye. Oh, could I have the four shot, Mr. Collins? Four shot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You got to be very tough on you girls being out there all alone. Well, Uncle Bitterroot is with us, of course, but with our daddy gone, I know this will give me an added feeling of security. We really appreciate it so much. I know my sisters will appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Mm, a few drops of this laudanum in a glass of water will help you to sleep tonight, Shada. It's been almost impossible to sleep since Papa went to prison. I understand. A real shame, that. You three girls are bearing up most admirably. I think you're truly remarkable. You're a source of great joy to Josh. I know you are. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Oh, this ought to be enough. 
Plenty. How's it going? Almost finished. You know, we got to figure out a way to get Uncle Bitterroot out of here when the time comes. Well, why don't we just give him two or three of these London cookies? He'll sleep for hours. There'll be plenty left for Josh to give the prison guards. You would have let me eat that. Well, you've been working hard, and now put to you good. I ought to brain you. Take it easy. You'll make the cake for us. Oh, is that where you put the derringer? In my little old angel food cake, honey. Good, good. Which loaf of bread did you put the... Hi, Hi Uncle Bitterroot. Oh, you look tired. Yeah, how, how, about a, how about a cookie? What a smell. Aroma. Smell. This here bread. Mmm. <laughs> uh, uh. <clears throat> Ain't nothing else in the world smells like it. <sighs> <laughs> you make my kind heavy bread. You know, Josh likes light bread. This here's real sopping bread. You can just get it there in the gravy and sop it up like you're supposed to without it coming apart in your... Tarnation's there. A file. Well, come back here, you. What? Have you three been up to? What a thimble-headed idea. Did you think you could get that file past those guards in that bread? Uncle Bitterroot! Don't you Uncle Bitterroot me. Why, they'd have found out they'd have had you by the scruff. <laughs> out of his sight for a minute. Well, you know, I'm telling you, I'm getting sick and tired of uh, taking a bath with a rope tied around my ankle and him outside the door holding the other end. It hasn't been that bad. It has almost. <laughs> Irish, just on my way to see you. Well, we come in for supplies. I have some news from one of my new boarders. About what? About Josh? Uh, no, about the drummer who said he saw Josh and Matt Copley fighting. What about him? He has been arrested down in Sweetwater. What for? I don't know, but it's worth looking into. After all, one of the key witnesses against Josh has been arrested. It sure is. I should be back from Sweetwater about Friday. Now we're putting an awful lot of hope in a mighty slim chance that drummers being arrested will mean anything. Yeah, well, don't tell me this is a waste of time. The waste is in only not doing more. Yeah, like what? Well, like... Wait a minute. I don't want to hear it. I want your solemn word that you won't set foot off this land except for fire, flood, or tornado till I get back. Do you understand? Whatever you say, Uncle Bitterroot. Ada, darling. Solemn promise, Uncle Bitterroot. Me? What in the world could we do? <laughs> I really don't. Name me a better way to get inside the territorial prison. Well, so we get inside. What makes you think it'll do Josh any good? Experience, honey. Well, what if it doesn't work? What if we get killed? I've got a worse thought. 
What if we get away with it? Oh, no. <clears throat> Do you look all right? You look fine. Come on. Youngsters, don't get itchy. Come on, up against the coach. Let me see all your hands. Throw it on the bar. Can't do that, young fella. <laughs> oh, Dad, blame it. I can't do that because I ain't carrying no box. Get the valuables. Come on. Okay. Nice and slow. Hand over those valuables. To that blamed woman. Oh. Well, it looks like you caught us. Um, we surrender. Yeah, we give up. Females. <laughs> <laughs> the prison. Isn't that what you said? That's what I said. Then we figure out a way to get Josh out, right? Right. And, and you tell me my idea won't work. I won't tell you that. It might. I won't tell you that. It might. Okay, it might. But if we try, I'm gonna be the one to do it. Oh, no. If we try, I'll be the one. Frankly, you couldn't carry it off. What do you mean I couldn't carry it off? Well, it's gonna take a certain A-clat. And you simply don't have A-clat. Are you insulting me? Oh, now, sister, would I insult you? Twelve to the road, gang. Twelve return. Twelve to the road, gang. Twelve return. these wretches stealing any of your supplies in here? Hardly, Miss Hopewell. Tightly run ship, eh, Warden? As you will see. Fascinating. Truly fascinating. As you could call it that, I suppose. Oh, no, I was referring more to the reading my article will hold for our newspaper subscribers. That's a rather strange profession for a young woman. Feature writing. Well, not if you're the only child of a newspaper publisher who always wanted a son. around the prisoners. Can I explain, Miss Hopewell, there are definite deterrents to their making trouble. That man with the rifle there, he's a crack marksman. Anyone who comes within six feet of us is in danger of being summarily shot. Oh, what are those? What? Uh, Gatling guns. Automatic fire to mow men down like wheat. You see, Miss Hopewell, 
Insurrections are planned. Let me show you something. The cage. You may never know when, for how long, or which one is to be held there. But the first sign of trouble, whoever is behind those bars will be shot. Be pretty difficult to plan an uprising under those conditions, wouldn't you say? Yes. I would also say that um, it seems an impossibility that any of these men could ever escape from here. I would say the same thing. An interesting point, Warden Mannering. Would you say that the gallows are a deterrent to crime? Ms. Hopewell, it's a known fact that the prisoners who climb those steps do not repeat their crimes. Warden Mannering is the overriding feeling of hopelessness here. Well, it's not by accident, I assure you, Miss Hopewell. That was the intent of the Army when they used this place to hold Indian hostiles. Yet deep in the breast of the most lost soul, there must be a glimmer of hope. And that's as it should be. Many suppliers of food for the prison. Suppliers? Contracted by the Territorial Prison Authority. They're all alike. The scurviest lot in the world. My manifest, check it. Let me unload and get out of here. Bureaucratic systems. I guarantee you what's written here is not what's been paid for. There's a story for you. Put it over there by the kitchen. Get up, you. Piece of paper they're licensed to steal. No inspectors, no guarantee what the quality is, no telling what the kickback is. You know, I came for a story on the territorial prison, but I'm beginning to wonder if it shouldn't be on your cell. You're such an interesting man, Warden Mannering. I mean, oh. Miss Hopewell, oh. what's the matter? I seem to have gotten something in my eye. Ah, uh, well, here, let me help you. Tilt your head back. Uh, that's right, look up. There we are. Oh, you've gotten it. Well, I couldn't find anything. Oh, yes, but I, you've gotten it. Thank you, it's oh. fine. Oh, oh, fine. Well. Warden Mannering, if my editor agrees, um, may I assume that it would be all right for me to return for another visit with you? I know the power of the press, Miss Hopewell. Well, I uh, had no intention of staying here indefinitely. I do have plans beyond my present station. <laughs> well, 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 um, yes, by all means, dear lady, come back any time you choose. Josh Cape. Yeah? I'm supposed to tell you your appeal's been denied. You hang on schedule in six days. I hear right, old man? They're actually gonna hang you? Uh, and they just fix it so I don't have to kill you. At least he knows we're here and we're gonna do something. Not something, what I worked out. I don't know. It's awful risky. Well, so is Josh's hanging. Anyway, have either of you got a better idea? I sure haven't. Look, a little doctrine of that manifest. A trip to that farm we passed on the way back. And we're on our way to getting Josh out. On our way. Look, an awful long way to go. It'll work.
but that there's the foulest stuff I ever see. Where do you people come from? Well, my, my daddy come from back Missouri way, and well, my ma, she come from... Thank you very much. And the manifest, woman. Give me the manifest. Mm. I swear, one of these days, one of you thick bit people are gonna bring a plague into this place. Well, it looks to me like a plague might be just the thing to bring it to where it's livable. What are you gaping at? It's that long since you've seen a woman? What's written here has been changed. What? Like you didn't know? Well, it wasn't done by me. I can't cipher. All I know is that my daddy told me to deliver you six crates of chickens, 12 chickens every crate, and that's just what I've done. If you don't believe me, you can write around there and count them for yourself. How many were contracted for? How many were what? Oh, what difference does it make? Everybody has to make his somewhere down the line, I suppose. Unload them over there. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm gonna need some help. You, you, you. Give her a hand. Hold, hold on there now, just a minute. That's just what they give me, a hand. I ask for help. I don't know how long they've been in here, but they ain't refreshing their memory, slip sliding up next to me. No, thank you. Now, you just pay attention to me. I'll take him and a few of them other sunset types. All right. You three. Get to it. Get these crates unloaded. Grilled up to. That's it, moving on out there. For heaven's sake. Josh, listen. Next time you get picked for the rogue gang, be ready. What? Move it on out. Got it? Help me here. Huh? What do you mean? You know where it is. Just be ready. Governor, if you commute my sentence, the hangings in four days. That's why you gotta get picked for work on the rogue gang before then. Uh, don't clever you, girl. I hardly recognize you. You remember me, don't you? And your sister used to bring me my meals in the Grand Forks Jail. Well, old Josh here, give me the particulars of the escape, won't you, Josh? Too. I know how many days are left. There's still time to try something else. Like what? If you're sitting there with some genius idea, let's have it. Come on, let's hear your brilliant thoughts. Ada. I know we're running out of time, and I know I insist that we do it my way. Hey, go ahead, say it. It's all my fault that Josh is going to hang. Oh, come on, we didn't mean it like that. Of course not. I'm scared. Oh, why? Now, why in the 
creator's name. Now, why not a week ago when Jim Pickett could still do something about it? Uh, will you listen to me? There still may be time. Oh, not the way the governor lollygagged around the last time when we were trying to get a new trial. Effie! Effie! Oh. Effie! Couldn't have come at a better time! Have you seen the girls? Come on, forget about the girls. Come! I'm trying to tell you, they ain't home. Don't drag your feet. Come with us. What's going on? We'll tell you on the way. Come on, we'll come on, this is serious. We'll tell you on the way. Bring your horse. Tonkins. Morning, Codge. Miss Essie. Bitterroot. Sure is fine weather we've been having. Save the sociables, Clell Tonkins. If we find out what we came to find out, we won't want them. Well, a body never could accuse you of not being direct, Miss Essie. Direct is the way this talk's gonna be, Tonkins. Now, you listen to me very carefully, Clell. Essie here got a letter this morning from Matt Cobley's family in Chicago. Uh, uh, what? From who? They say there was a certain thing missing from the belongings of Cobley that I sent back to them. The way they described it in their letter, this is what was missing. When I loaned you $20 on this a while back, you told me that this had been in your family for years. Now, how about it, Clell? Have you got anything to say? If you have, you better say it while you still got a head to say it with, because I'm about to tear it off your shoulders. I'll tell you one more time. It's too long and too hard, all right, for a man your age. I'll show you what age has got to do with trying to save a friend's life. Bitter Root, listen, even if you do get to the prison in time, without official word from the governor to the contrary, the warden will have no choice but to hang Josh. There is no way to get to the governor on time, let alone get to the prison. You say that's the way it's got to be, I accept it. Then you got to accept that I got to do what I'm doing. in your hat down here you and you you'll do come on young fella ah uh, pull it over the top don't you lag don't you lag okay huh you hanging tomorrow ain't you tomorrow's the 27th well, i'll give you a break you don't have to go breathe get over there with the others over by the tunnel Where? Over there by the bridge working with that man. That's Dutton, I see him. 
right there, Ada. See? Okay. It's all up to you now. Come on. Let's make sure no hair shows this time. <laughs> my pants. Where are my pants? Oh, the pants. The pants. Here they are. Oh, it's the shoes I'm worried about. I've already looked into it. The pants are long enough and so is the skirt. Okay, okay. <laughs> about what's that you know the hardest part for you for what well you're all woman honey for the next little while don't let any of it show <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll be all right. Get out of here. Uh. It doesn't seem to be broken, ma'am, but if you'd like to remove the shoe, I could check better to make sure. Well, that's good of you. Well, it's probably just a sprain. But to make sure. I mean, if this nice man... Sister! Uh, I hadn't noticed those men. Oh. <clears throat> what are they? Prisoners, ma'am. Prisoners? From the territorial prison. Oh, dear. No need for concern, ma'am. Sister, if you're not hurt, I, I want to go home. <sighs> Charity's such a sissy cat. <laughs> this nice man won't let anything happen. We're late now. Father will be worried. Oh! Oh, uh, would you help us to the wagon? Why, of course. Let's 
get back to work. Come on, move it. young girls I've seen in a long time, and one of them twisted her ankle. And old Doc Peters here was asked to have a look at it. And what could you do? Well, I squatted down like this. She put her foot right there, yeah. and she raised her skirt all the way up to her knee. Yeah. And then I gave her a pretty little ankle, an A number one examination. I even touched it. Well, then what happened? Then what happened? Yeah, we got back in the wagon and went home. That ain't funny, Peters. Now you can open the gate. That certainly was a long day, but a fruitful one. Uh, the gate, please, open it. Warden Manor is such a fascinating man, don't you think? My story on him is going to make... Is Hope well? Warden Manor! Well, your to... willingness to let me do a story on you has boosted my stock on the paper at least a hundred points. Well, how did you when get When the territorial her? governor heard of the idea and reacted so favorably, well, you can imagine my editor's attitude toward me. The territorial governor? Oh, yes. He and my editor were some function in Cheyenne. I must say it was a pleasant surprise to find your name so regarded, so high up. Really? Well, please. Story. Don't you agree? Indeed I do. Oh, I'm glad. To me, your speaking out on those issues will more correctly show your depth of character and your integrity than any words of mine. I couldn't think of a better okay. way to dramatize evil. What? Than you take that turn in the cage. Let's go. No way. On your feet. Where's Josh? Please? I said on your feet. I want to see the warden. Shut your mouth and do as you're told. That's one of his daughters. Warden, Josh Cade's escaped. Guard. Bring that prisoner here. Did I hear someone say Josh Cave has escaped? My men will find him, you understand? I assure you of that. Believe me, they won't. He's a long way from here by now. Well, you're going to stay here until they do. I am? My dear young lady, aiding and abetting the escape of a prisoner is a felony. Now, hold on there. She's going to stand trial. Well, you're absolutely right, Warden. Uncle Bitterroot. And I'll see to it myself she does. This here badge says she's my prisoner. You two can't make a fool of me. That's all you're concerned about. Seems to me the way you ought to look at it is that you don't have to hang an innocent man. It's terrible to think you would have hanged Josh knowing he didn't murder that man. The court said he did kill him. The judge said to hang him. Well, Uncle Bitterroot almost killed his horse and himself to get here to tell you that the real murderer confessed. My orders were to hang him on the 27th. That's tomorrow. Now, unless the governor changes those orders, when my men bring him back, he'll hang. And to think I was going to write an important article on you.
afternoon, Bayroid. Mr. Collins? Any news from Josh? Not a word. Uh, that's strange. After better than a week of his escaping, I hear tell that Warden Manorin fella is still looking for him. No. Yeah. Uh, well, old Josh will turn up when the time comes. Dragging on an awful long time, isn't it? What do you mean, dragging on? Josh. Well, you'd think he'd have got in touch with somebody by now. Wouldn't you? Yeah, you, you'd have thought that right enough, yeah. Well, I suppose all we can do is wait and hope. Your ten days of skulking in that room so folks won't know you're in town is over. You didn't know? What in the name of creation? Oh, ain't looking for you no more, Josh. Just sort of an unofficial welcome home, Judge. They have known all along that you were hiding here. They yeah, have? There wasn't a soul in town who didn't know. <laughs> Not even one of them let on. Huh? Nobody even told us. I can't <laughs> right. They're your friends, Judge. Sheriff, my foot, if they had an election today, you could be mayor. Oh! No, 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 no. Good heavens, Uncle Bitterroot, don't even think that way. Being mayor, oh, we've got enough to do just helping on the place. We couldn't do it all alone. You've got to understand there's only so much a city girl can do in country like this. For pity's sakes, I was just funning. <laughs> well, let's go home, girls. Yeah. Gosh, you knew I was just funning, didn't you? Girls, Josh, what about your watch? Josh, what about your watch? Josh, don't you want to walk for the crying out loud, Josh? No daughters could behave more wonderfully than Joshua Cave's daughters. It's in the blood. Yeah. Even though they were raised in St. Louis, away from their father, look how they grew up. Oh, it's in the blood. I'm certain of it. <laughs> <laughs> They could plow the Rocky Mountains, charm an eagle off of her nest. They could down the Colorado and still have half a day to rest. Smart as a den of foxes, tough as a keg of nails. Look out, all you claim jumpers, they'll wrap you up in bales. The daughters of Joshua K.